Now let me tell you something, child of God, about um, prophetic messages. I, I learned this week that uh, if you, uh, the, the most current uh, prophecy that is really selling very well is a prophecy about people dying, you know? Prominent people dying. Now, the Bible, the Bible says everyone that is alive should know that they will die. It is something that is for everyone. Whether a prophet, a teacher, a doctor, a politician, whoever. It, it doesn't need to be a very serious prophet. One thing that every prophet should know is that there is what God tells you. And there is what God sends you to tell the people. I think that's where there's a problem. Most prophets do not know that God confides in you. God trusts prophets. He speaks to them. They are his mouthpiece. But again, they are his friends. That is what God tells you. Even you as a mature believer. That is what God tells you. Not because he's sending you. But because you are his friend. You are talking. The problem I have seen with most of our prophets is that they do not know, they do not have the ability to differentiate between what God is talking to them and what God is sending them. It is not every message that a prophet receives that is supposed to be communicated. There is a message God communicates to you using the prophetic signals but his intention is that you analyze it, you reason it out, and by the power of wisdom, you will communicate it in a manner that is not antagonistic at all. Praise God. Even when God sent prophet to King Ezekiah, the message was not like you are dying. The message was put your house in order. That is why he never died. He was given more days. Because he made a decision that outruled the prophecy. The decision was above the prophecy. Every prophecy is not a must happen. A prophecy becomes effective after it has been spoken. Not when it has been received. Because a prophecy is a communication received by the prophet. Then when it is communicated to the intended audience, it becomes a prophecy. But when a prophet receives the message, it is not a prophecy. It's a message. When you give it to the people, it becomes a prophecy. So if God gives a prophet a message that you will have a house or buy a car, and the prophet dies before communicating the message, that message will never come to pass. This message has come to pass when they have already been communicated. And that's why the prophets of this nation should be very careful on some utterances. Because when this word has been spoken, it becomes effective. And that's why we must be very careful. A prophet cannot just be issuing curses. An anointed person cannot just be issuing curses. No. It is, the Bible recommends that we, we become quicker to bless. Because every word you speak that is prophetic will become effective after it has been spoken, received and believed by the audience. But if a prophet receives a message from God, and dies before communicating the message. That message dies. Are we communicating? The Bible in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 9 says we see in part and we prophesy in part. That means we do not see clearly and completely. We 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 9. We see in part. 
and we prophesy in part. So every prophet must agree that it's not a must that everything you see must come to pass. Prophets see a lot of things, but they communicate few. And the few we communicate are the things that we believe that we somehow have a confirmation. One time in the book of Acts chapter 21 and verse 10 up to around verse 13. But you can read the entire story. A prophet called Agabus was able to see that Paul if he goes to Jerusalem he will be tied and be killed. That's Acts 21. So Paul was supposed to preach in Jerusalem. Listen. Listen to me. Paul is an apostle. And here is a prophet. And all these offices are from God. What the prophet is seeing is from God. And the message that Paul is carrying is from God. Now look at this. God has given Paul a message and he has sent him to Jerusalem. Then the same God has sent a prophet with a message to tell Paul what he will suffer in Jerusalem. It is up to the apostle Paul to decide whether to obey the prophet and not to go because the prophet is speaking from God or to obey the Holy Spirit and go. Paul being an apostle under what we call apostolic persuasion he refused to be scared by the prophetic message. He did not tell the prophet that what you are seeing is not true. He knew that whatever the prophet was seeing is true. But he had a conviction and a persuasion that God will help him to deliver the message. And when you read the Bible, when he arrived in Jerusalem, he was received gladly by the brethren. He spoke the message. He even spoke to the elders. He continued preaching. Of course, eventually he was tied, but he was not killed. That tells you, child of God, that every prophecy you see, it is not a must that it will, it will come to pass. When a prophecy comes to pass, especially a negative prophecy, it is because the recipient became afraid. You know, I don't want our country, Kenya, to become like other countries where a prophet issues a message that a, I have seen a great man of God die in, in the month of July. And when you are not dying, he, he makes a plan to eliminate you. So you, you, when you are in a prophetic church, you must be very careful. We are not here to give negative prophecies. No. We must be very careful. Negative prophecies are also prophecies. They are communications. But any negative prophecy, according to my understanding, can be overturned by a genuine decision. Praise God. Amen. There are two things which are above any prophecy. That's the power of prayer and the power of decision making. That's what the Bible says. I will bring calamity to my people. But it again says, but if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, then will I hear from heaven and change. Always, many times God changes prophecies when people pray and when they change their ways. When they change their ways. That tells you that prophet, prophecies and most of these prophecies are conditional. They are not a must happen. They are not a must happen. And, uh, but for, for young prophets, our intercessors and young prophets, this week as intercessors have been praying, I have seen on your messages, we are going to have a state, state barrio, state something. Let me tell you, there is nothing like that. Not that what you are seeing is wrong. What you are seeing is a probability. But do you see where I'm standing? I'm standing on the altar of change. Whatever I say will come to pass. Hallelujah. 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 There are a lot of things I see. 
even concerning this church, but I don't communicate them because I know when I know what God is telling me and I know what God is sending me. I don't just communicate everything that God tells me, even concerning your life. I know a lot of things. If some of you, because of immaturity, if you are given the messages I am given about you, you may not even greet one another. You will not. But I know when God talks to me, and I know when he sends me. If God does not send me to you, even if he tells me something about you, I don't tell you. Then I just know God believes in me. He is communicating a message because he believes I must mature to enter into his conversation. Then I will ask God, are you sending me to this individual or you are telling me to know what I can do? 